Hello and welcome to my introduction series Out Scripting for Artists. My name is Alexander Richter and today we want to dive in into the fourth part of Scripting for Artists in Python. So what we want to do today is how to access external files. So let's open up this file here, Python 4. And now what we want to do is we want to have access to this function inside O5 for print. So there's a function inside there, which is called print new. It awaits a name and then it prints some information using the name and giving you a job and experience and whatever. So, and now we want to use this function inside this file. So how we do that? There is a st st um, statement which is called import and it allows you to access um, all the files inside the same file folder or which is part of the system path environment variable. So in this case, let's start with the same folder. So Python 4 and Python 4 print are in the same folder. So how do we use import? We say import, then space, and then we, we call it by its name. So Python 4 print in this case. So, and now we want to access a specific function inside this print. So we say Python 4 print dot print new, so the function's name, and give it in this case a name string. So if we would execute this one, we will get name Alex and job and so on, which is exactly what's part of the another file. So and how can you compare using import? Import is like you're copying all the information from a, from a different file inside this one during the execution. So every time you execute, you more or less copy all the information inside that and use it as if it would be part of this file here. So, but we can do more. We can also navigate through specific folders. So for example, we're currently here and we want to access um, a folder inside there. So for, for example, extern folder and there's a print extern pi. And what it has, it has a function called print file name and it prints the current file uh, path of the current file. So we want to access that, how we do that. So there's another statement to navigate through folders. It's called from. So if you want to go to extern, we say from space, then extern, which is the file's name, folder's name, and then import the file name. So import print extern. And again, if you want to access something inside print extern, we say print extern, print file name. So if we would execute this, we will get file and the file path, you see extern, print extern, to this specific file. Very important, if you use from, you need to have this file here. It's underline, underline in it, underline, underline dot pi. It uh, allows Python to understand that this folder is part of a chain and so it can access that. So the thing is, if you would not have it or delete it, you will get an error because it doesn't understand that it can access this, this folder here. So you need to have this file to uh, navigate through that. So very important. But of course you can also do multiple folders. So for example, we have the external file folder and inside there, there's another folder which also does a print extern and prints the file name. So how we access that? The same way we say just from, then the first folder would be extern and the next dot another and again print extern and then again the print file name function. So if you would execute this, you see the first one would print from this and the second one will print from extern another which works perfectly fine here. So this is how you can access things from a specific location but maybe you have something on your drive or in your network or in your projects and it's not part of the specific location. How do you access this? So as I said there's a uh, second option it's called the system path environment variables. So there are some a list of variables, uh, fo folders, which uh, Python usually have access to. So everything which is part of this um, list, you can access with from an import. So how do we like, for example, know which one is part and how we add to that? So 
To do that, you first need to import Sys, which is a built-in um, module in Python. So it's part already of Python, so you can import it everywhere. So you say import Sys. And to know what's inside the, the paths of Python, you say sys.path. So if we would print this out, we will get this list here. So this list um, has all the function, all the folders which are now understand understood by Python itself. So we have here Py, uh, C Python 27 and so on. So everything inside this list, every folder inside this list, you can access with from an import. So, but now we want to add a specific folder. So for example, um, we want to add this path to the list. So uh, Python extern. So we can do that. Just say sys.path. And then if you want to add something, dot append. And in round brackets, you add your path you want to add to that. So if we would print before and after out, you can see we now have in the new version, we have this path added to that, like the artist Python extern. And what's the benefit now here? You of course can now access it without using anything. So for example, before that we needed to access the print extern um, file, we needed to do from extern, import print extern. But now since it's part of the system path, you can just say import extern. So if we would execute that, it works. So you see, we access, access this one extern print extern. And now we just need to use an import. And of course, this is like in this small folder, but you can also add, for example, your project pipeline path to syspath, your uh, C on, and so on. So you can add specific uh, folders so you can access them easily or make a from uh, import statement there. So this is quite very important and very handy to use external files. The next thing I want to show you is how to do debugging and error handling, which is kind of kind of very important in uh, working in Python at all. So let's have a case where you have a um, shot path, which is D project shots and then shot one. And then a task list, like a list of tasks with rigging, animation, and line. And you want to combine um, the shot with all the tasks. So maybe you want to open them all or give it somewhere so it creates all the folders from every task in every shot. So what you do is you do a loop. So you loop through all the tasks, give it to item, and then you add them to the path and maybe create them every, every time you, you combine them. So, and then you're curious and want to know what will be like one of the, of the results. And you see there's something strange happened. Um, it combined all the tasks to one path and you're, you're completely confused. Like how did, did, did this happen? So as I told you before, print is one of the most important debugging features you can use because it allows you to put a print everywhere and to know all the current states of a specific information. So if you put inside the loop a print and say, let's print out the result every time it adds, it changes. You will see that if we execute that, okay, the first one looks good, uh, so we add rig, but then suddenly we add to rig, we add anim, and then to anim we add light, and it's like, no, that's not what, what I want. I want to repeatedly change and add to that, but not stack on that. And the reason for that is because we say shot name equals shot name, which always gets bigger and bigger, uh, add the item. That's not what we want. So to change that, we just let's have it rename result path and print this out. And as you can see, uh, since we don't stack again and again on the same um, file, we, um, ch we created what we wanted. So we printed out like, okay, we have a, a path to Rick a path to anim and a path to light. And now maybe we can create it. So prints helps you to get, for example, your result state, 
but also to get your in-between states, which are very important. So use print everywhere, every time you're not 100% sure if everything's uh, moving your way or you see some, some error happening. You can use print to understand like what's in between. So the next thing I want to show you is how to handle um, arrows. So let's have this example. So we have here a string and we combine it with an integer, which you know you can't do that because they are not compatible. So if we would execute this, we'll get an arrow, which is a normal state. So it's very important to understand how arrow works. So in this case, um, we get a traceback, which is uh, a printout of a state. So here we uh, trace back. So and the first thing we it says to us, it's the file. So the, we have an, an error or a problem in this file. It's a current file. Okay, so we know where it is. Then it tells you which line. So line 17, which is our line here with the problematic plusing. Okay, we know what this is. So it, it prints out also the line we have here problem. And then very important, it says what type of error it is. It's a, it's a type error, which says it's a, it cannot con concatenate string and integer objects. So you know, oh, oh, I want to combine string and integer. It this doesn't, this doesn't work. So if I would convert it, it will work. And now you can combine that. So um, it's very important to understand that um, errors are totally normal if you're doing scripting because it's part of a learning and adapting. Um, you just need to learn how to interpret um, all the things. The most important information are which file is broken, which line is broken, and um, what's exactly the problem. Sometimes it can be vague. Um, if you don't understand a specific error message, just take it, put it into Google and Google it. And most of the time, one of the first results will explain it to you in a better way when sometimes there's cryptic messages. But there's also another case where, where you can handle even um, errors. Sometimes you're not 100% sure if an uh, error will occur, especially, for example, in folder creation. Folder creation can be very uh, tricky. For sometimes you don't have the rights for a specific um, path. And then if you want to create a folder, it will definitely break. So what you can use is um, the try and accept. What it does, if you put something into, like you say, try, uh, then um, call, and then with an intendation, you put something inside there. It could be a function, it could be a chunk of code. And if something inside the try happens, so it's like something breaks, like in this case, we again try to combine string and integer, it will automatically catch this and go to accept, which is the next statement and do whatever is in accept. One, one part which you can do always in accept is either catch it and say, oh, if it doesn't, doesn't work, try something different. Or most of the time you just print out the error message so you know, oh, something is broke, I maybe need to fix something. So in this case, we say try, then we combine a string with an integer, which will definitely break in this case. And then in accept, we say, okay, um, do, do me a favor and use exception as exp and then print out uh, what's happening. So exception, uh, the ex exception is adding frame and then please print out the exception. So if we would execute this one, we will get the result exception add, adding frame cannot con concentrate string and integer object which was the exception before you, you remember. So this is a really cool thing because it allows you to be to have unsure code inside you without always have completely broken uh, every time something uh, unusual happens. But be very careful using this because if you put too much code inside the try, um, what happens, it will break at a specific point and then it will automatically go to exception without executing all the rest of the code. So be very uh, minimalistic in using try and accept here. So thank you very much. I hope you liked this Python series and I will see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.